ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. You have been uh, registering with many people for today's webinar that celebrates three years of European digital credentials for learning. We uh, will have a very interesting agenda uh, this morning uh, to celebrate the three years. Um, we will start with an opening speech uh, that will be given by Anne Branch. Anne Branch is head of unit of the skills agenda at DG Employment of the European Commission. This will be followed by a presentation by my colleague Céline Jambon. So my name is uh, Koen Nonden and I am team leader uh, for transparency and recognition of skills and qualifications at DG Employment of the European Commission. The presentation by my colleague Céline Jamon will be followed by, and that's the core actually of our program of today, by four testimonials of use of European digital credentials for learning. These will be given by Professor Dr. Carlos Delgado Clos of the University Carlos III of Madrid, then followed by Tuvan Leti and Matthias Spiegel from the Nuremberg Institute of Technology. We will have Stephanie Vela Cortes from the University of Malta, and finally David Delgado Martin of the Spanish Europe Center. So those four testimonials will be the core of uh, of today's event, and this will be followed, of course. And we hope that we have enough time available by uh, questions and answers and session uh, in which, of course, you will be able to uh, very actively uh, participate. We are using a Slido for the questions and answer session, so we will show you later uh, the, the way you can uh, connect to Slido and also we will have a Slido question uh, in between at some, uh, at some moment. You can, there is no uh, open chat for anyone, uh, but you can uh, chat with the panelists if you wish, but for the questions and answers, we will follow uh, Slido. Let me now start by giving the floor to Anne Branch for the opening speech. Anne, you have the floor. Thank you, Kuhn. Can you see me and hear me okay? We can see you and we hear you very clearly. Perfect, thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the European Commission to today's event, celebrating three years of European Digital Credentials for Learning. And it's really great to see that so many of you have joined us today from many countries from both within the EU and beyond. And it's uh, fantastic to see uh, well over 400 registrations. So that shows the keen interest in this topic. Now, as you're all aware, skills have been a priority for the Commission during the last years, and this will continue in the future. Indeed, the chronic skills and labour market shortages we're facing the, our aging demography, plus the need to make the green and digital transitions a reality, mean that skills will remain a high priority for the Commission. And this is all the more urgent in a context where Europe urgently needs to become more competitive, resilient, autonomous, and, and more socially inclusive. And many of you will have seen the letter and Draghi reports recently, which highlighted very prominently just how crucial skills are to our competitiveness as well as to people's prosperity and well-being. And at a tight time of we're in a situation of very tight labour markets, and we see that skills are becoming even more relevant and employers are giving greater prominence to them. Now, more and more employers are using skills-based approaches, uh, which are sometimes called skills-first approaches, to recruitment and career development. And these require a true lifelong learning culture. And indeed, uh, when we think about it, most people, once they complete their formal education when they're young, will now spend some 40 to 50 years in the workforce. And the pace of change, including constantly evolving technology, is extremely rapid, and this will continue to be the case. So upskilling and reskilling need to be the new normal for all adults, and everyone will really need to upskill and reskill their entire lives. Now, this means that skills systems must adapt and be more flexible, both in terms of how we deliver on skills, as well as 
uh, enabling us to better understand new skills learnt along the way over a lifelong period and acquired in new ways, both formally and non-formally. Now, the EU's skills agenda has been our key strategy in the skills field for the past almost five years. Uh, it was adopted in 2020 and a great deal has been achieved through its 12 flagship actions. It's led to many individuals uh, gaining new skills and these really important that these are made visible and trusted so that people can reap the optimal benefits from their learning for both their labour market needs as well as for their further learning needs. Now, despite many efforts made in recent years at the EU and national level, we see that skills challenges continue to exist and new challenges are arising. Uh, we see that across member states, we're still far from reaching the EU headline target of 60% of adults taking part in training every year. Currently, the level is estimated at only 39.5% on average. And the Commission President has acknowledged the challenges we face in the field of skills, and that's why skills appear prominently in the political guidelines she put forward this summer, in which she states the goal of creating a true union of skills. Now, the work on the union of skills will begin uh, once the new commission is in place, but uh, what's clear already from uh, the political guidelines and the mission letters to the, uh, the commissioner designates is that it will include a number of measures, including a skills portability initiative to help ensure that skills and qualifications acquired in one country are valued and recognized in another. Now, today's topic, digital credentials, is crucial to the topic of skills portability. As all of you know, they allow skills to be more quickly understood and they can provide a real boost for the transparency of skills. So today's event is very topical uh, to be celebrating three years of European Digital Credentials for Learning since their launch in 2021. And I think it's interesting to recall that uh, last November, the Commission adopted a skills and talent mobility package uh, in which it stated that the era of paper diplomas is coming to an end. It's time for all skills documents and learning certifications to be available digitally. So this is the path we need to follow. Now, European Digital Credentials for Learning are an invaluable European standard format for digital diplomas and learning certificates. Thanks to digital credentials, individuals can easily share their learning achievements in a secure and digital way when they apply for a job or for further learning. And they can, really importantly, they can help to fast track these procedures and processes as receivers of digital credentials can instantly see what they contain, their origin and their validity. And in a European context, people should receive digital credentials that can be understood across borders. Therefore, it's critical that credentials anywhere in Europe are compatible in both format and structure. And that's why the Commission has developed the European Learning Model as a data model aiming at it, making sure that digital credentials issued anywhere in Europe are compatible with each other. Now, today you'll hear several testimonials of how the European Digital Credentials for Learning are used in practice. We hope that today's event will inspire you to explore how they can help you. And I think it's true to say that they really represent a paradigm shift in the way that learning achievements are presented, which will be of benefit to individuals, to employers and education and training institutions. So thank you and I wish you a fruitful event. Or thank you very much, Anne, for your inspiring words and uh, in, in, yeah, shared in your opening speech. I think you demonstrated the importance of uh, digital credentials uh, for, you know, future labor market, but also for, uh, for life and learning. So this is really, uh, yeah, the topic of, uh, of today's event and it, it, and it shows the relevance uh, of what we are doing, uh, what we are doing here. So thanks a lot again. Then we will now move to uh, the next item, which is a presentation by uh, Céline uh, on the milestones of three years of European digital credentials for learning. So Céline will tell you what has happened since three years, where we stand and what we have achieved 
but of course there are also still some challenges ahead. I give the floor now to Cindy. All right, and thank you very much, Kuhn. Um, so to start uh, this presentation on the three years of EDC and uh, to continue on uh, the after the inspiring words of introduction from Anne Branch, we can uh, deep dive first of all into the broader policy context. So uh, the European Institute Credentials for Learning are uh, delivering or helping to deliver on a variety of uh, EU level documents. Uh, first and foremost, the Europass decision, that is uh, the legal base for the whole development of the European Institute of Credentials for Learning, and um, delivering um, on our key policy document, that is the European Pillar of Social Rights. The European Digital Credentials for Learning are useful. Um, to make skills visible in a variety of initiatives, including the individual learning accounts, council recommendation, or the micro credentials recommendation, but also in the different skills academy that exists, including the European Cybersecurity Skills Academy, um, and also uh, the European uh, Degree uh, Proposal. It's also a strong instrument to deliver on the European strategy for data, and uh, for the different uh, digital education action plan and achieving the European education area by 2025. And as Anne mentioned, the European digital credentials for learning are also an, in, an instrumental part of the skills and talent mobility package that was adopted almost a year ago. And finally, the European digital credentials for learning can make a reference to the European skills, competencies and occupations taxonomy that is ESCO. So why do we um, need digital credentials? We need digital credentials because we are moving into a world that is increasingly digitalizing and we need to uh, adapt to the different transitions, including uh, the need to replace traditional paper credentials with more agile and easily shareable digital versions. And we need to also align with the Commission digital strategy fostering a connected and take forward European society. We also need to respond to the digitalization of the labor market and for the need for digital qualifications um, to help as well uh, recognition in the education and training field. Then there is uh, the uh, security and trust aspect, meaning that we are moving towards uh, temper evident credentials thanks to um, different uh, security layers, including uh, the use of electronic seals and the use of international standards, that is the verifiable credential. These ensures authenticity and integrity of each digital credentials, making unauthorized changes evident. And it can also help to combat diploma myths, meaning that digital verifications can decrease the prevalence of fraudulent academic institutions and fake degrees. Um, then our main um, need for digital credentials is recognition. So to have a single way of presenting knowledge and know and um, and skills where the credentials come from. So we have a standardized presentation with a unified way of showcasing achievements, skills and knowledge, but also to make transparent the origin of the credentials. So it ensures that everyone viewing the credentials knows the source and the authenticity of um, each credentials that is issued. Then, and especially as we are moving towards a skills first approach, showcasing knowledge and skills is very important because then we are also adapting to the needs of the labor market. So we highlight the most sought after skills and competencies to make candidates more appealing to potential employers. Um, and this can also work for application to further studies. And we have this uh, as well lifelong learning approach learn ensuring that individuals can stay updated and relevant throughout um, their life and learning journey uh, and can present all their different skills that they have acquired throughout their lives. And finally, data um, ownership. So the individual is in control of their data. They are in control of their own wallet and the, of their own uh, portfolio of skills. So they are really um, in control of their own achievements and it ensures data privacy and security. And this uh, ecosystem based on digital wallets facilitates the easy management, sharing and verification of credentials to make it very simple for learners to navigate academic and professional landscapes. 
And to deliver on all these uh, needs for digital credentials, uh, we are relying on the European Digital Credentials Infrastructure, which is a suite of web-based free tools uh, that exist online. Um, in particular, we have an online credential builder to build uh, compliant credential templates and to issue them, meaning that uh, they would be uh, sealed electronically and then sent to uh, their credential, the credential owner. Um, then uh, the person can receive the credentials, they can uh, securely store them in a wallet or offline if they, as they prefer. And then um, they can decide to share the credential, meaning that the information of the credentials will be shared with another person or another organization with just one click. And when the person will receive the link, they can click on it and view the credential instantly. But it will also be verified instantly, meaning that you will be able to see that the credentials is authentic and that it is valid. On top of all these um, free tools, we also provide an open source version of the European Institute Credentials for Learning Infrastructure Code uh, for larger implementations or for any modifications you may wish to add to um, the existing suite of tools to cater for your specific needs. Um, and because today we are celebrating three years of European Digital Credentials for Learning, it's an occasion to look back at the different milestones that we've had with uh, the infrastructure. So it all started with the adoption of the Europass decision in uh, April 2018, uh, which um, then led to an initial pilot with interested member states and stakeholders that started a year later. We um, then had in October 2019 a major uh, peer learning event with all the different piloting countries that allowed us uh, to learn a lot uh, from the experiences and also uh, to develop an infrastructure that would really cater for education and training providers, but also member states and national authorities' needs in terms of showcasing um, learning achievements. In October 2021, so three years ago, we had the official um, launch and um, the service went into uh, full production and we had um, an online event hosted by, uh, opened by Commissioner Schmidt that uh, gathered over a thousand uh, interested parties to um, see this uh, kickoff of the European to Credentials for Learning. In uh, November 2021, so less than a month later, we had the launch of the European Digital Credentials for Learning open source infrastructure. And um, already in December 2021, uh, the Ministère de l'Éducation Nationale de l'Enfance et de la Jeunesse of Luxembourg received the Digital Transformation Project of the Year Award in Luxembourg. So it was a very important milestone um, to support as well the digital transformation within member states. Um, another highlight, uh, and I won't say too much, uh, too many words on that, is the kickoff of the Certi Digital project from March, that started in March 2022, because we are very honored today to have uh, Carlos Delgado with us that will uh, tell us a bit more in a few minutes. And um, as another milestone, we had uh, in uh, July 2023, the launch of the European Learning Model Browser and Interoperability with the W3C uh, Verifiable Credential Standards. In uh, September 23, we had the first uh, European University Alliance, ECIU, so the European Consortium of Innovative Universities, that started issuing micro-credentials as European digital credentials for learning. In uh, November 23, we had another very important milestone was the connection with DECO um, the, uh, from the European Quality Assurance Register that has this database of uh, quality assurance um, information for higher education institutions. And this is very important because it went hand in hand with the launch of this uh, accreditation database that we have developed in Europass that allows institutions to issue accredited credentials, meaning an additional layer for trust in European to credentials for learning. In December 2023, the European learning model um, became a um, schema, so a data model registered under the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure 
structure, which is a milestone for interoperability of digital credentials in Europe. In uh, January uh, 24, we moved all the open source package into uh, a single repository um, together with all um, open source implementation information under the codes.europa.eu. And uh, as well, in January 24, there was work together with the credential transparency description language, open badges and other um, international standards um, to be included in the global micro-credential schema mapping initiative, um, which led to the official mapping of the micro-credential standard elements contained in the annex of the Council recommendation to be entirely mapped to the European learning model and therefore to the European Digital Credentials for Learning. And finally, our most uh, recent development has been the launch of a co an online community for implementers under the Futurium um, headline. We um, also want to highlight some major upcoming features, um, in particular new templates uh, for credential specific credential types and in particular, we are looking at EU level templates in, uh, such as the diploma supplement or uh, the Europass mobility document. But we are also working closely with uh, ENIC-NARIC centers as part of an Erasmus Plus project to look into comparability statements for recognition. We um, will also be uh, doing uh, development in the future, in the next few months. Uh, to uh, ensure alignment with the EU digital identity wallet and the ones only technical systems, which are uh, major EU level initiatives to ensure interoperability and that individuals can really share their learning credentials easily across all this uh, ecosystem. We will also um, be doing technical improvements of the, this infrastructure, um, such as uh, ordering of uh, different items, or um, over implementers' uh, request. And um, the next feature that we will be working on will be uh, an archive feature to allow issuers to keep an archive of issued credentials. And all of this is just a snapshot of the major upcoming development. We could not uh, fit everything in the slides, but that already gives you a preview of um, what will be coming uh, in the next few months. And uh, now we would like to invite you to uh, go to Slido. So you can uh, find on the screen uh, the QR code and the hashtag to join Slido and um, as well as the link. I think it has also been provided in the chat. So you will uh, be able to uh, find us on uh, Slido. And there on Slido, you can uh, you can see our very first question. So, what is your experience with uh, the European Digital Credentials for Learning? Do you have any um, experience with it? Um, and if so, what do you um, what do you think of uh, the current infrastructure? Um, and then. Um, Yes, oh, apparently so a lot of beginners today, which is also uh, very good to, to see some uh, new faces joining us online today. Um, so I see some of you say they're learning to use it. So we are constantly updating our um, support uh, documentation. Um, and we also have a dedicated support team in case you're encountering any difficulties. Um, so for those of you who also have some uh, theoretical knowledge only, um, I hope you will be uh, inspired today by our different testimonials to, um, to get it started. Okay, uh, and some of you are also piloting in piloting phase. So that is uh, very good to hear. We hope that uh, also today's testimonial will um, will uh, help uh, to to go into the next phase of uh, your digital credentials journey. Yeah, thanks for your inputs to this uh, to this question about your experience. 
we will also um, later this year, and we will uh, provide information in the chat, organize a, a webinar on EDC for beginners. So I imagine that quite some of you who are beginner and who are thinking about exploring EDC, uh, may that webinar may be, may be good for you. Just a few comments on some other items. Next, you is a problem. So just to tell you that also advanced um, electronic signatures are now also accepted as default in European digital credentials for learning. And for that, you don't need uh, the you don't need to install next you. OK, now we're going to finish this in, let's say, half a minute. But it's very interesting to uh, see your um, experiences here with the European Digital uh, Credentials for Learning. And it shows that, um, yeah, there is still a lot of uh, terrain that is that is open and that, of course, uh, digital credentials is not yet the mainstream way of issuing credentials in Europe. But uh, as we all know, I think uh, it will become more important for the future with a more yeah in a more digitalized world should we move to the second slido question yes let's move to the second slido question so we will close this one and we will keep the records and the second question is about the type of credentials that you would like to issue and this poll is now open exactly Because uh, perhaps during uh, so this introduction, we uh, mentioned a few uh, examples of uh, implementation, but uh, we have uh, indeed an infrastructure that can cater for any type of uh, learning credentials and formal credentials, accredited credentials, diplomas, transcript of records, but um, also diploma supplements in the near future. But uh, we also mentioned micro credentials, um, non formal um, learning certificates are also entirely possible to be issued under the European to credentials for learning. So there's a really um, a wide range of possibility on how um, and what type of documents you can issue. It seems that indeed micro credentials is really uh, the number one right now on the screen, but we have a lot of um, other credentials um, that are there, so macro credentials, diplomas, um, full degrees, uh, different certificates, but also non formal learning, professional qualifications, um, digital competencies, which is also an option to have really um, specific and targeted uh, certification of learning, uh, transcript of record, um, BET or vocational education training modules. So very um, important also to highlight that indeed uh, it does not um, support only one type of um, learning, but really all sectors of education and training can be uh, support can be um, made use of for the European credentials for learning. Uh, are also interesting, so teacher training certificates. So indeed, it can also be made use not only uh, to be issued to uh, learners, but also as part of a professional uh, development. It is really a lifelong learning tool that can be used. Okay, I think those are very interesting uh, results with micro credentials on, on, on top, indeed. Um, I think it's time now to move to the four testimonials that we uh, that yeah that we will present uh, this morning, and we are very grateful to uh, to the presenters of uh, the uh, of the four of the testimonials that we have uh, with us today, and uh, we will uh, start now with um, yeah. Professor Dr. Carlos Delgado Close. It will be followed by Stephanie uh, Vella Cortes, then Tuvan de T, Matthias Spiegel, and then finally David Delgado Martin. I think I made a small error in, in the order. So we will have Sati Digital, then we will have the Technische Hochschule Nuremberg, then uh, Stephanie, and then finally David Delgado Martin. So we will start with the testimonial by Carlos Delgado Close. 
Carl, Professor Dr. Carlos Delgado close is, uh, he is a full professor of kinematics engineering and director's delegate for digital micro credentials at his uh, university, which is University Carlos Terciero in Madrid. He is also director of the UNESCO chair on scalable, scalable digital education for all. He is carrying out a lot of research also. He has done extensive research and his main research interest is in educational uh, technology. And we are very happy to have um, to have you here today, Carlos, because you will present the adoption of the digital um, micro credentials in Spain through the SEPI Digital project, which is, by the way, much larger than only micro credentials, but covers all public universities in uh, in Spain. Um, so the floor is yours. And for the four testimonials, we have uh, each of them. We have ten uh, minutes. And a special thank you to you, Carlos, as well, because you are presenting from the US and you had to get up very, very early this morning. Thank you very much, Kuhn. It's a pleasure to be here to share some ideas of what we're doing here in Spain. I will be presenting the 30 digital, or 30 digital projects. Uh, this is the main objective of this uh, presentation, although I will touch upon two other lateral topics like the micro credits plan which uh, refers to this uh, certain digital project and some pragmatics uh, of using the european learning model that comes with it again so yes three years ago the european Organization for learning were launched but also three years ago a plan of the spanish ministry of universities was launched for the digitalization of the spanish university system and there, the projects were called for, were uh, called to a number of different things for the digitalization and modernization of the uh, European, of the Spanish universities. And in particular, there was a reference to digital certification procedures aligned with the European Commission standards and um, formats like Europass, EDCI, and EPSI. So, Certi Digital is one of these digital projects. Uh, the objective is to provide a digital credential service for the whole Spanish university system based on the formats published by the European Commission. The project is coordinated by six universities, my university, Carlos III de Madrid, but also five others, Lucia Castilla-La Mancha and Ismael garcia Barea, from vice rector from the university, is also in this meeting, uh, and other universities like Universidad de Murcia, Granada, Oviedo, and Rubira y Virgili. These are the six coordinating universities, but they are also participating other 17 uh, universities as early adopters. So altogether, it's 23 universities, public universities throughout Spain, all over Spain, that are participating in this project. The project has three main components. One is EDC, European Digital Credentials. The second one is EPSI, the use of the blockchain, European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, uh, which is uh, for European purposes. And also, we thought it's important to have this uh, community building so that uh, all the participants could share best practices, could share also problems and how to solve them. So there was a, a big effort in, in defining use cases, each university defined each use case, and in this uh, community building with workshops, etc. So, on the first part, European Institute for Learning, so the European Commission has defined several standards, in particular, in particular the ELM, the European Learning Model, and also developed some tools, some software, like the EDC Online Credential Builder. So, what have we done within the project? We have taken this online credential builder and improved it, made it practical, um, make it useful for um, the deployment in a big university with many students. So several of these improvements that have been done is managing users, groups and roles, uh, in, in a better dashboards and logs of the whole issuing of credentials, the credentials issued are also stored, Importantly, 
uh, an API was developed for the integration into ERP systems like Sigma is one, Sigma is one and Investor 21 is another one we have in Spain that is being used for the <coughs> uh, universities. So this is what is going on at the same time as well now that this API is being integrated in these ERP systems and many other enhancement and training and change management. So this is what has been done and tender was issued and was won by Entity Data, who was also the developer of the EDC Online Credential Builder in Europe. The second part is, and, and this work is practically finished. Now there's a second part, which is still going on, which is uh, integration into EPSI, the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, here with also some improvements, development of a wallet, uh, related to UDI also, etc. A number of practical um, make it useful for the deployment and universities. The third element, as I said, is community building. So every half a year we have had presential face-to-face -face meetings uh, in Madrid in June 22, Albacete in November 22, Oviedo June 23, Tarragona uh, uh, December 23, we had Kun Nomden there as an invited speaker in Granada last June, and then we have a next one in December in Murcia. In this Granada event, there were not only present the 23 universities who participate in the consortium, but also other universities were allowed to participate. And 20 other non partner universities also came and uh, learned about the details of this project. Of course, entity data, the development of the solutions, Rediris, who is the NREN, the, the Spanish internet provider for uh, universities and, and research centers, uh, will be the um, institution that deploys this service once the, uh, it is completely finished. And then other providers like Sigma Universitas Ventuno were there as well and several use cases and training material has been developed. Let me very briefly, in my 10 minutes, also mention another initiative of the Spanish Ministry, which is the Microcredentials Plan, which is the impulse to develop micro-credentials by Spanish public universities. And there, in this plan, it is mentioned that these micro-credentials developed, these courses, should be <coughs> certified uh, with using Europass, using the um, the <coughs> development that has been done within 30 digital so there's a link of this plan this 50 million for spanish universities to develop the content and uh, with the necessity to use 30 digital for the credentialing of these courses final element Pragmatics, it's good to have standards, it's good, the syntax is clear, the semantics is clear, but sometimes how to use it and how to fill in different elements. There are 480 different elements or the fields in European learning model. How do you fill it out? For, let me give an example. The title element, what do you put? Is it the title just this, like, like for example, front end developer? Or do you write something like university micro credential on this? No, this is a little detail. And there is a joint effort of all the Spanish universities to fine tune, to identify uh, in which way the different fields has to be filled. So this is a joint committee with the digital and the rector's conference and uh, another network of postgraduate studies in continuing education. So let me finish now by saying that it has been a uh, uh, national efforts to provide this software for the practical usage of uh, ELM, EDC, EPSI in, in universities, aligned also with other plans with uh, for the development of courses and also how to use it in a practical way. And this finishes, I think, my 10 minutes. Thank you very much. We cannot hear you, Kun. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Carlos, for your comprehensive presentation in such uh, limited uh, time explaining about uh, 30 Digital. 
and and also uh, sharing with us the new development regarding the microgrids uh, plan, which is also based on uh, Fertig Digital. And for us, it's interesting to see as well that also in the Spanish law, you refer to Fertig Digital and you refer also there to the European development. For us, from a European perspective, we really think that this interoperability is really crucial. So that credentials in Europe, wherever they are issued, whenever country are really understood uh, also in other countries and in other uh, contexts. So thank you very much once again. I just want to tell the audience that we are, of course, sharing the different slide presentations that are uh, passing uh, today that you will see uh, today. And I would like to repeat that for questions and answers, uh, you can use uh, Slido. And uh, we are, of course, coming back and will reply to your questions in the dedicated Q&A session. So thank you very much. Let's move now from Spain to uh, Germany. And I would like to announce our next presentation, which is about uh, using European Digital Credentials for Learning for the implementation of digital micro-credentials. And uh, we will have a use case on micro-credentials for data in the higher education context that will be presented by two speakers. Uh, the two speakers are Tu Van Litty and uh, Matthias Spiegel, both from the Nuremberg Institute of Technology in Bavaria in Germany. Uh, tu Van is an uh, instructional uh, designer and uh, she is also team leader of the micro credentials program for data analytics. So that's the M MC for data. And she is developing interdisciplinary qualification programs for higher education students, focusing on competency development, future skills, and digital literacy. And she will co present with Matthias Spiegel. And Matthias is a technical specialist for issuing micro credentials in the same program. And he also has provided important political, uh, important technical insights uh, for the platform. And uh, yeah, he is since 2022 also more general uh, IT specialist, ranging uh, from e-learning support to programming and event technology. So, to Van and Matthias, I'm very happy and, and proud that you are here today with us. And I'm giving you the floor for your uh, presentation. And also, you will have 10 minutes for your testimonial. The floor is yours. Thank you for your in invitations to the event and your introductions of ours. My name is Duvan Leti. Together with my colleague, Matthias Spiegel, we will give you shortly insight into our micro-credential program and how we use EDC to implement digital micro-credentials at our university. So on the next slide, um, you can see the agenda. I will start first with an overview of who we are, what we want to do with MC for Data, so, and then why we choose the EDC from the technical point of view. And finally, the lessons learned and some future perspective. Yes, and on the next slide, um, an overview of our Earth, so who we are. Could you please switch to the next line? Thank you. Um, yeah, our University Nuremberg Institute of Technology is a university of applied sciences with around 13,000 students. It makes our university one of the largest of its types in Germany. With um, among 30 faculties and own professional school, we focus on applications oriented teaching and applying scientific method in professional practice. So this is very briefly about our university. Um, Matthias and I, we are come from the Center for Teaching and Learning, a central institution responsible for the development of teaching for the whole university, with a portfolio of various offerings for didactics, for future skills, technology, and teaching, and so on. And the, the uh, micro potential MC for data, what we introduce you today, is a part of the future skills and innovative formats um, in the portfolio. And it is the first micro potential at our university. And on the next slide, you see the, the goals, um, what we want to achieve with our MC for Data. So again, MC for Data is an, a qualification program for higher education students with a focus on data analytics. 
in micro-credential format. Um, good use data analytics as the topic for the qualifications program for upskilling and reskilling, because we want to improve data literacy, data analytics skills, and lifelong learning for, of our used, uh, of our students. Good is currently highly demanded at the job market in Germany. Um, good use micro-credential is format, um, even the format is completely new at our university. Uh, uh, because of its typical characters. We have an issue. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, the program since March 2000 and 23. At the end of qualifications program, of course, the student will receive digital micro-credentials, which is completely new at our universities, too. Here's the goal number three. Um, until now, we just issue certificates and agree, uh, degree diplomas in papers, um, not in digital. But um, we know that digital credentials are the futures. Um, so therefore, in agreement with the vice president and also the university management, we decide to take issuing and verifying digital micro-credential as the pilot project. And we want to gather the legal and technical issues, um, requirements, challenges, and possible solutions as lessons learned, um, as a preparation step for the further implementation of the digital academic degrees, uh, diplomas um, of the whole university. Okay, so so far, uh, what, our, um, what are our goals? And on the next slides, I will give you insights um, why we choose um, ETC for our digital micro credentials? Could you please move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, because MC for Data is a pilot project, we have some requirements and some key factors need to be considered by issuing um, budget. And just just let me back one slice back. Um, budget and personnel. Could you please get back to the slide before? Um, one slide before would be great. Okay, thank you. Uh, the budget and personnel, yet we set up um, ourselves limited budget and personnel as well as the project durations for two years. <laughs> um, I think you, you need to be back. Um, anyway, yeah, by issuing, it is important that the digital credential needs to be verifiable as well under the condition uh, con consideration of data protection and yeah, no. <laughs> back a little bit, um, under the conditions uh, of data protection and data security. Um, for students as users um, of the micro-credentials, um, yes, stop, right now is correct. Um, yeah, for the students as the users, um, the digital credential must be shareable and easy to use. So we start first with the dash research and um, expert interviews and analyze solution and platform which are currently available in national and international contexts. So which can be clustered in three different groups. Um, the solution of the company in Germany, the platform using in the university in the USA, and also the EDC. So um, some aliens are working on solutions, but they are still in the research and development phase. So we compare um, our requirement with the solutions and decide for EDC and Europass, because these solutions fill in all our current needs. And additionally, we can profit more from EDC, which I really want to highlight here. The platform is free of charge for the university in Europe, so it is very, very thankful. Um, with Europass, the student can manage and share their credentials, including the CV for the job application in Germany and outside Germany. And the EC, um, EDC support team is really competent and they always help us find all questions all about um, issuing the credential. So until now, we are very satis um, satisfied with our digital credential MC for data, which be issued and verified by an EDC in Europass. And now move to the next slide. Um, here, just very briefly overview, how does the credential look like? Um, on the left side, um, the information all about the credential and the different learnings unit that the, the students um, already learned during the program. In the middle, you see the 
credentials um, created exactly the same, like our paper certificate, the student received um, the paper, the certificate um, in papers form, as well as the digital credential, um, the Europass. And on the right side, um, you see the verification process, verification process. The issued um, MC for data micro credential as verifiable, so you see that here, and the student can document online, share with the third person, with the company they want to apply, and um, it has allowed the student to improve the visibility of the competence profile through the socials and networking platform, you know, like LinkedIn or Facebook and so. So now I hand over to my colleague Matthias. He will give you a very, very deep insight how we customize our credential in Europass. And next slide, please. And Matthias, is this your floor? Yeah, um, I'm going to breeze over it because uh, we don't have much time. So I'm going to give you some insights in the um, HTML template, which you see on the left, how it looks um, when finished. Um, it displays information from the building blocks of the uh, European Digital Credential. And uh, is defined uh, and is written using HTML. Um, I'm gonna talk about the challenges. Feel free to look at the code later. Um, so the first challenge uh, is a, a dynamic salutation based on the provided gender of the person receiving the credential, and um, this is needed in Germany because we need to address female uh, students with. Frau and male students with her and um, others without anything leading the name. Next slide, please. So the next challenge uh, we occurred is that um, maybe in the future we want to translate our template. And uh, for that, we might need a different date format. And uh, it's actually possible to add the date format in the language specific translation. So when you create a new language, you can change the date formatting there. And uh, this is how we have solved this. Um, next slide, please. So um, this was a task challenge because we oriented our visual representation on the physical paper. And um, it had uh, a bar on the right side which uh, was hard to do in the sanitized HTML. So we needed to add an image. For this, we used base 64 encoding and pasted it into the HTML template. This is a workaround, but it was totally possible. Next slide, please. And the last challenge we had is that we needed to display a list contained in to uh, in another list item. This is um, usually very simple because you would know which item of the first list the second list is in. In this case, um, we weren't able to be sure about it because the all the lists are um, randomly ordered. So in the first case, it could be correct. And in the second case, it could not be correct. And uh, we found a solution. Um, it's not that easy. So um, it's uh, uh, we basically checked each list item if there is another list in it. <laughs> so um, that was the technical part. Feel free to ask questions later. So let's move to the next slide. I can, uh, this is the last slide uh, in our presentation. So um, you see that we can customize our uh, digital credentials um, through um, um, Europass. So after three years using EDC for MC4 data, we can say that um, what we implement with MC4 data micro credential can be transferred to the larger context. Um, for example, to issues and very fine digital bachelor, master degrees, diplomas, um, diploma supplements uh, of the whole university. And um, what I would like to say is um, that support and the approval of the president, the vice president, and also the executive board of the whole university is extremely relevant for the successful implementations of digital credentials. Um, in the future, what the next step we could do within our micro credential project. Um, 
as us, of course, we will um, offer the English version for the digital credentials uh, so that the student can share and apply for the jobs outside Germany. Currently, it is in German, but um, in the next semester, we will do that completely also in English. Uh, currently, we use the web-based platform of EDC and Europass. Um, it is interesting to explore also how to integrate the EDC into the university on structure system. Um, is that what we can also um, test as well? And the last thing I would like to highlight in order to implement digital credentials successfully, that is acceptance of the students as a credentials users. The acceptance of university as a users and, of course, acceptance of companies or the third parties as the receiver or the credential reviewers. I think the word reviewers correctly is also very important. All needs to be improved currently. Um, the acceptance is not really so high. So, therefore, in the future, we really we wish that um, the students company and also the university can use digital credential more and the acceptance can be improved. And that's all from our sites. Um, and on the next slide is our contact um, and emails. And please feel free to contact us. And thanks a lot for the attention. Thank you very much, Zufan. And thank you very much, Matthias, for your, um, for your presentation and for demonstrating your use of European Digital Credentials for Learning. I think you have done really great work with it. Uh, also, uh, I must say that personally, I like very much also the design that you have uh, created um, for the credentials that you have in use. So ladies and gentlemen, just for the order, so um, the uh, recording will be made available on YouTube later on, and we will inform you once that uh, Slides will be shared, of course, with you as well. Now I would like to move to the next testimonial. And the next testimonial will be given by Stephanie Vella Cortis. And Stephanie is Senior Information Management System Support Officer at the University of Malta. And she has a key role in managing and optimizing her institution's information systems. And she has expertise in database management, workflow automation, and other support services. But not only that, she's also very passionate about sustainability and integrating environmentally conscious practices in professional and also personal life. So we are very happy to have you here. Uh, Thank you. Morning, Stephanie, and you will talk about uh, the journey of the University of Malta with European Digital Credentials for Learning. And contrary to the previous uh, speakers, you will not be using slides. So no. I'm giving you the floor for the next 10 minutes. Thank you. So um, uh, Malta is a very small country and the University of Malta is uh, the only public university in, uh, in Malta. Um, uh, so uh, a lot, we have a lot of students um, because it's uh, free. Um, for the undergraduate and uh, as a forward-looking institution University of Malta embraces the digital transformation to ensure that its uh, graduates are well, well equipped for the future of uh, working and uh, continuing learning. Uh, the University of Malta has been at the forefront of adopting adopting innovation, innovative solutions in education with a strong focus on enhancing the digital experience of our students and academic staff. Um, as part of uh, the vision is uh, to enhance the digital experience. But also we have the vision and uh, and would like to go on a journey of integrating the European digital credential um, for other projects. Um, as a history, we have been using the EDC since 2001. Um, we have been basically part of the pilot project. Um, and we have since then issued 2,975 EDC certificates that are uh, 1,580 postgraduate and 1,395 undergraduate degrees, and there are thousands of micro credentials, uh, ADC certificates that uh, are issued every year, basically. Um, 
so EDC has not only improved our um, way to distribute the qualification, but it also helped the students um, be recognized on an international scale. Uh, through EDC, we are delivering secure, verifiable, and temper proof digital credentials aligned with our uh, commitment to academic excellence and global recognition. So we have chosen digital credentials because of its portability and accessibility, um, verification and security, uh, environment uh, sustainability, we are trying to uh, shift from paper based to digital credentials and also um, for efficiency and innovation, uh, means of credential issuance and management um, for both learners and the institution. And uh, I'm going to talk now about challenges faced and uh, solutions. Obviously, the EDC team has been very helpful throughout the adaptation period and um, in every problem that we have, if it's technical, um, as my office, we deal with the technical and also the issuance of the these EDC. Um, we had some technical uh, not problems at the beginning for the integration. We had to see how to integrate our database system to the EDC. Um, and we developed a phased approach um, working closely with the technical team at the EDC. Um, we tested and refined the integration at each stage and we enhanced our cybersecurity measures, um, ensuring that the digital credentials were secure and compliant with the European standards. So um, we dealt with user adaptation. Um, obviously, it's what was a new thing, and we had students and academic um, questioning its validity. So um, we have since then encouraged students to adopt and trust these digital credentials. It was initially slow, um, with the preference of traditional paper-based certificates, um, but we focused on an educational campaign highlighting the benefits um of the edc for the students including a faster ap approach uh, processing time and global recognition um we went to the regulatory compliance so we saw that it aligned the implementation with local and european regulatory frameworks and this required careful planning and adaptation particularly with regard to data privacy and certification standards um, it is something that we had worked with compliance officers to ensure that every step of the implementation is adhered to the gdpr and now we have to see with the launch of the um the vault of the the, the student um copy that we are going to have if we are going to be on uh, safe regarding the GDPR um, if it, it is legally accepted to hold this such data on the EDC. Um, as the future of EDC and the University of Malta, our main aim is uh, towards a more interconnected, efficient and innovative academic ecosystem. And we aim to have a wider approach across across programs. Um, we'd like to integrate also the um, the, the um, I forgot the name. So we issued the degree, but we also would like to add the transcript, uh, which is a bit complicated in our system, but we are working to issuing um, this uh, via EDC also. Um, integration with emerging technologies. Um, we are also part of the, we are also part of the groups of the blockchain and we are looking forward across that. Um, and obviously to commit to environmental efficiency and enhance global uh, visibility for our students um, to make their life easier and uh, make them more competitive in the international job market.
um, that's it from the University of Malta. We encourage students to seize the opportunity to enhance um, their academic and professional journey by using digital credentials um, to showcase your skills, qualifications to your employers and institutions worldwide, if you'd like, um, and position yourself as a global citizen in the workforce. Um, the final thought is uh, the European Digital Credential is not just a technical, uh, technical, technological advancement, it's a reimagination of how learning is recognized, shared, and value in the modern world. Um, if you have any question, please let me know. That is all from the University of Malta. Yeah, thank you very much, Stephanie, for uh, sharing what you are doing in Malta with the European Digital Credentials for Learning. And I, I know you, that you are very ambitious uh, in its use for uh, transcripts, also for, for the Greece. So thanks, thanks a lot for having shared uh, this experience. I would also like to invite, of course, the audience, if you have specific questions to the panelists, uh, and related to the to the testimonials, of course, you should also uh, please feel free and and share those questions in in the Slido. Then we are moving to the next uh, to the next presentation, and the next presentation will be given by David Delgado uh, Martí, and uh, this is about um, um, this is about the use of uh, EDC and another way of implementing EDCs, namely for issuing attendance certificates. Uh, and David is um, actually currently uh, the deputy head of the Spanish National Europass Center uh, and part of the vocational education and training units within the Spanish Service for Internationalization of Education. He is an educational civil servant since September 2003 and has been mainly involved in foreign language teaching and school administration in, in also a couple of countries, the UK, Spain and the USA. And uh, yeah, so long uh, experience and coming from the field of uh, language teaching and now involved in implementing EDC as part of uh, the work for the Spanish Europa Center. And, David, I'm giving you the floor. David also is presenting without uh, slides. So, David, you have your 10 minutes. Thank you, Kuhn, for the presentation. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be here in, in the celebration representing the Spanish Erasmus Plus National Agency. And I'm going to share our experience uh, within the ETCI uh, world. As you said, Kun, what uh, what we do here at SAP here, so we issue certificates of attendance through uh, through the EDC infrastructure to all those attending any kind of event organized by the Spanish Erasmus Plus National Agency, like the kickoffs, uh, meetings for Erasmus Plus beneficiaries, um, congresses, conferences, info days, etc. Et it's true that this type of credential does not require a big amount of content or information as the examples given by my previous colleagues, um, but CPA uh, does not organize training courses that leads to a proper learning outcome. However, apart uh, from the recipient's basic information and the data um, of the events, such as the dates, the venue, the number of hours, our EDCs also contain the links to all the presentations offered by the speakers of our events and the links to the recordings of the sessions, because most of our events are streamed. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about the path that we followed uh, at CEPIE. Uh, I have to say that he, the Spanish National Europa Center has always been involved within uh, the ATCs from the very beginning, back in 2019. Prior to the launch of the new Europass portal, 11, as Celine mentioned in her slides, 11 Spanish universities participated in a pilot project on EDCs, together, I think, with uh, 16 other countries. Participation was voluntary and any university could join. As interest grew among them, it became necessary to create a protocol of actions to be carried out by the, next, by the new members. We have to remember that uh, by that time, EDCs were named Europass D 
digital credentials. And there was a direct link between both initiatives. Thus, uh, ESNEC participated on that protocol and helped to inform and assist potential new um, universities who wanted to take part of uh, that pilot. The years after, as uh, the Spanish uh, NEC coordinator, I invited uh, many members of the EBC team in Brussels to our main annual events, to our Europass Info Days 2020 and 2021. I also remember I invited Ca uh, Professor Carlos to come and uh, explain about his uh, 30 digital project. Also, so we all learned about the great potential of the EBC infrastructure and all the benefits it brings to educational institutions. I uh, firmly believed in EDCs and started to study the possibility that the Spanish National Agency could issue EDCs for our kickoffs uh, meetings to Erasmus Plus beneficiaries. Uh, from my point of view, it was uh, the perfect fit. In, um, in October 2022, that's another milestone, uh, the Spanish NEC along with other uh, European networks with EURES, Eurodesk and Euroguidance, we hosted a big event in Mallorca, Learning by Living 2022 conference, which was named Digital Nomads of the 21st Century. That's why EDCs needed to have a main role in that conference and the four Spanish networks agreed on issuing our first certificate of attendance to Learning by Living attendees. By that time, the PS engine had um, been started, but some technical requirements were still missing. That's why uh, our first EDC were issued by uh, the Brussels team, by the European Commissions, on our behalf. That that's another possibility of, of EDC, and it was a big step forward. And a month later, in November 2022, CPS started uh, issuing EDCs without any external support, and we have been doing so um, ever since. My experience, uh, how we managed just to get uh, a national agency uh, to issue uh, EDCs, well, uh, the beginning was not easy, I have to admit. At the beginning, we had to hold many internal meetings in our national agency to, to explain the initiative, the potential advantages, and to show also the differences between these EDCs and a PDF signed digitally. Uh, this is the way we used to certify attendance at uh, our events. The differences were not easily understood by all and the workload um, seemed enormous, but luckily the head of uh, my vet unit and the director of the CPA supported me and believed in the EDC initiative and all our national agencies engines were set um, in motion. Um, I like to point out that no, no matter how much a person wants to issue EDCs for, for his or her institution, there must be a big team behind. In our case, at the request of the CPS director, our IT unit was in charge of gathering all the technical requirements for the issuance of EDCs, and our great communication unit was in charge of the building uh, of the credentials and the issuing of the credential. Uh, I have to admit, and it is clear, that the building of the credential is the most challenging part of all this process. I, I try to identify all the fields that need to be filled according to the learning outcome that we are given. Most best practices, uh, our communication unit adapted the registration forms for our events to collect all the participants uh, specific information and included also a field to provide the Europass wallet as well. I will talk about uh, that a little bit uh, later. Um, we produced at CPE a guide also for internal use with a double objective to describe the necessary infrastructure uh, for the building of the credentials and to establish the steps to follow for the issuing of the credential themselves in case of any changing of staff um, to, to be able to continue issuing EBCs without any uh, problem. And uh, also, uh, it is uh, worth pointing out that we had the EDC Brussels teams 
uh, covering our backs at our disposal. They helped us in everything from the very beginning, and they still do. I remember the day that we were going to issue our first EDCs uh, on our own. On our own, Ildiko was remotely connected with the communication unit and myself to make sure that everything was done correctly and to witness um, this milestone achieved by the first uh, national agency in uh, in Europe. Um, in terms of benefits, I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, I think benefits have been made clear in today's webinar, but, but I'd like to point out uh, benefits from the, <coughs> sorry, for the point of the individuals. As a NEC coordinator, I have to say that individuals can build an online portfolio to track the learning. And here is the link to Europass again, a CDC can be deposit uh, can be deposited directly and stored securely into the individual's Europass uh, wallet. And there are more than 7 million Europass accounts uh, worldwide. And also individuals can easily share later on their credentials to get a job or apply for further training across um, Europe. And um, I'm going to finish my presentations with some uh, statistics, uh, something that, 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 that I like to mention. Uh, and I, I'd like to share that in 2022, um, CPA uh, was able to accredit four events, issuing um, EDCs to 727 participants. In 2023, we accredited uh, 22 events issuing 6,340 EDCs to different participants. And so far in 2024, we have credited 16 events and issued over, I mean, nearly 3,000 EDCs. That's, it's a grand total of over 10,000 EDCs throughout Europe in the last two years. Remember that we started issuing in October, November, 20. 22. And um, since that moment, as I said, we exclusively um, issue attendance certificates via EDC infrastructure, and we do not want to go back to the digitally um, signed PDFs as we used to do. And um, this is my, my, my part, Con. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. David, for, um, for sharing your experience uh, with EDC and also uh, to make clear uh, how it can uh, benefit individuals. We are now coming to uh, the Q&A session of our uh, webinar. Uh, we have opened Slido for you and many of you have um, already been active and have, have been posting questions on Slido. And uh, we've been selecting uh, the questions um, and uh, you have been voting also for uh, a question. So we have now a sort of ranking, I would say, of the different questions. And we will reply to those starting from the top. So you see the, the Slido is uh, still, um, is still uh, available. I think we posted the link in the, in the chat. And uh, you, or do we see it on the screen? Ah, voilà. And here we have the slider questions on the screen that received most uh, support. So the rest of the webinar, we will uh, devote to Q and A. As I also said before, of course, you can ask general questions and uh, questions addressing uh, the commission, but also please feel free to address directly uh, the speakers who presented the, uh, the testimonials. Let's go to the first uh, question. We will try to reply as much as possible in writing to the uh, sorry in uh, orally to the to the questions. So the first question is: Is the adoption of EDC in line with expectations? How many EDCs have been issued to date? How many organizations have adopted EDC as credentialing platform? What types of organizations are these? So it's not one question. This is four questions in one uh, slider question, but Celine, are you able to uh, reply here? 
Yes, uh, we can see that uh, the European Digital Credentials for Learning uh, adoption is really growing. And we see really now um, a strong increase, especially um, in a specific month of the year that uh, correspond more to uh, the end of the term or the end of the academic year. So we uh, saw, for instance, a really a big spike um, in, um, in June and July. Um, how many EDCs have been issued to date? There, we need to be very clear that we are not tracking European digital credentials for learning that are issued. So we only have a partial figure of the number of credentials that um, have been issued based on uh, what was reported back to us in the survey that we carried out last um, January. So in January 2024, but what we know right now is that there are 35,000 European credentials for learning stored in Europass wallet, meaning that uh, individuals who decided to store the credentials in the wallet, we know that there are other um, options for individuals to store their credentials, so it is only a partial picture. Um, there we have around um, 14 regular issuers of credentials and then around 50 organizations that are either in pilot phase or about to issue credentials. Uh, but again, this data dates back from uh, January 2024 when we had our last implementer survey. Uh, and finally, on the types of organizations, so we have a very varied picture. We have um, vocational education training providers, we have universities, as we um, showcased this morning. We also have more national level implementation, as is the case, for instance, with Spain and Certe Digital. Um, we also have um, uh, university alliances that are issuers, but also a lot of non-formal uh, providers. Um, and for instance, we have uh, the case of Spain with the National Europa Centers being an issuer of credentials. Um, but it's a really a varied landscape and it's not only for formal education, but also for non-formal learning that uh, these providers are issuing credentials. Okay, thank you very much, Celine. Then the next question is in which countries are uh, it is, oh no, sorry, I'm making a mistake. How the, the next question is, how is uh, the European Digital Credential System ensuring seamless, interoperability, seamless interoperability with other credentialing frameworks, both within the EU and internationally? What are the challenges and how are these being addressed? Now, what I would like to say here is that indeed interoperability uh, is uh, achieved through, in particular, the European learning model so this is really important there because uh, even if not everywhere let's say exactly edc is used as long as the elm is used as underlying uh, data model the credential systems are interoperable and then your question is about europe but also internationally and here i would like to refer to some of the discussion that is ongoing uh, also within the, the W3C consortium, uh, where there is an, uh, a working group on, on educational affairs and where our support team is also uh, one of the active participants. So we are, uh, I have to say, we are discussing at global level. We are also discussing with other initiatives like the at, at One Tech, uh, consortium, um, but so many things are ongoing. We also, you also have to understand, of course, that this field of digital credentials is new. Things are being built, things are underway, and um, this means that many things are moving at the same uh, at the same time. But in this context, I would like to to stress the importance of the uh, of the European learning model. I don't know whether any of the colleagues of, of our support team who are also active in uh, the W3C consortium would like to add to my uh, answer. Ildiko or Anthony. 
Um, I can just add a few words and just mention that apart from, you know, collaborating generally with these organizations, there's also a lot of work ongoing to crosswalk uh, the various data models with one another. So we've been actively working, uh, let's say, with members of the community on uh, interoperability with the ELMO standard, interoperability with open badges. Um, there's been some work on interoperability of micro-credentials uh, with the CTDL in the United States. So let's say there's a lot of work in the community uh, on uh, interoperability of different standards. Uh, the thing I do want to underline here, though, is that we hear a lot about uh, why isn't there one standard to rule them all? And the reason there are different standards is because different standards have different use cases. So while it's important that let's say you can understand uh, you can understand these different standards and you can understand the data across them, the objective is not to merge the standards, but really just to kind of increase interoperability and use of the same credentials across different systems. Thank you, Anthony. Anthony is um, part of our support team and a digital credentials expert. Um, also, in this context, before we move to the next question, um, uh, we can say that um, work is going on to build uh, on a converter as well between um, the European learning model and the ELMO uh, data model. Um, then uh, the next question is, in which countries are EDC credentials legally recognized as official proof of a degree? And can EDC credentials substitute the paper version of a degree or certificate? And this question I'm passing on to Celine. Okay, so there we have um, European digital credentials for learning. They are based on uh, what is called the EIDAS regulation. So the regulation uh, around digital identity, but that also the regulation around digital seals and, and electronic signatures. So what is uh, valid and uh, officially recognized between countries is um, the qualified electronic seal. And for the advanced, there is a mutual acceptance um, of uh, other advanced seals if, um, and, uh, if the country is using it for the same use case. So what we have is more of uh, the recognition of the signature itself, and then it is up to the different countries to define in their national legislation what they recognize as official proof for a full decree. And they can also um, make a choice of having both a digital or and a paper version. Uh, what we have seen also so far among our implementers is really um, the start by uh, issuing documents that are also not regulated by law, such as, uh, for instance, transcript of records or other type of uh, learning achievement documents um, as part of um, their um, gradual move towards digital credentials. Okay, thank you very much, Celine. Let's move to the next question. So the next uh, point made was that all testimonial cases are from universities. Do you have any case of VET or adult learning providers using the EDC platform? So I have to correct that not all testimonial cases are from universities because we had the uh, testimonial by uh, by David uh, Delgado about uh, the EDC used by uh, the Spanish National Europe Pass Center. And I also would like to stress here that um, EDC is for learning achievements. So there is no um, restriction whatsoever. For example, for uh, vocational education and training establishments, for adult uh, education providers, also for schools, there is no restriction whatsoever regarding the use of EDC. And we do have concrete use cases also of that. Uh, I, would just like to recall the example of Luxembourg, which was really one of the first questions, um, first cases of, and, and actually won a prize for issuing digital credentials for uh, VET uh, qualifications. So no, um, no restriction whatsoever. And of course we would welcome more VET establishments 
uh, using EDC, more adult education providers using EDC, please feel free to contact us. Also, um, our support team is uh, available uh, to you. You saw in the testimonials that there was a positive comment about uh, the support provided by the team. So this, the, 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 the role of the support team is really to help you. And if you have questions, just contact them. If needed, a, a meeting can be set up. And I think, Tuvan, you raised your hand. Uh, so would you like to add to the question? Uh, Not this question, but the, the questions before. <laughs> just the question so before, about yeah. the and apologies to you. I should have observed a bit before. And of course, also the other panelists, uh, if you want to add to questions, also please raise your hand and then you get the floor. But Tuvan. Please go ahead. Yeah, just going to um, add uh, one more information about the question um, uh, regarding the question, can we use digital credential instead of the paper credentials? Um, in our point of view, um, I think that it is quite difficult right now because of the accessibility. So in German, Greek code um, is barrier freiheit. In English, I think we called it accessibility because uh, the learners, um, um, not all the learners have, have accessibility to the, to the, or a possibility to use and manage and share the digital credentials. So therefore, um, we as a university, we have to guarantee that the confirmation, the certifications um, uh, can be used by our learners. So that means the learners have the right to require papers and additionally, the digital uh, credentials. So therefore, currently, we use both for our students. Just as uh, additional information. So yeah, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Tufan. Then, uh, uh, did you have your hands raised? Do you want yes. to add something to this, or is it already about the next question? That is no, it's about the previous questions about okay, the one good. that referred me about the, the valuing. I mean, from my point of view, there is no danger of the valuing EDCs. Um, as you said, Kuhn, there's no restriction at all. We can issue micro credentials or any certificate of attendance, like in my case, or a letter of recommendation. Why not? As uh, if you count of the e ceiling and all the infrastructure, there's no restriction to um, to issue this type of uh, uh, documents, say. And uh, maybe the, 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 there was a misunderstanding because uh, um, all the events that are organized uh, in our national agency are meant for the teachers. We do not offer webinars to the students. That's why students won't get any EDC um, by us. However, the teachers are the ones that uh, are the coordinators of different Erasmus Plus projects, and they are attending to our events and to our kickoffs. And these are the recipients that received the EDCs. So, uh, so far, we're not issuing EDCs to any um, any students. Just wanted to, to make clear. Okay, thank you very much, David. Then the, you have replied already to, to, to the question that was addressed to you. And then we have now on top the question on how to show the skills and capacities that adult learners have gained through their live experience or their informal learning activities and how can we use these EDC for vet or adult education? Now, I, I would like to pass some elements of this question to, to our support team, but before that, I would like also to say that the purpose of EDC is to issue digital credentials for any learning achievement. And this includes also uh, non-formal and, uh, and informal learning. So live experience, informal learning activities, can be perfectly captured also through EDCs. And the second question is how can we use these EDC for vet or adult education? I would like to pass then the floor to support team, I think Anthony perhaps or Ildiko or a small um, uh, uh, All I will add uh, to what Kun said is that EDCs were designed out of the box to be able to support non-formal uh, 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 learning as well as formal education. And we have certain concepts in digital credentials which allow for that. Um, so uh, you can issue achievements and achievements are kind of things that have learning outcomes, that have grades and so on and so forth. 
but we also allow you to represent what we call activities. And an activity can be uh, anything from participation in a voluntary organization to job experience to uh, attendance to non formal learning, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you uh, choose to describe with the digital credential. Okay, thank you very much, Anthony. We move to the to the next question and please continue uh, replying. If we wanted to adopt the EDC, how do we start? The decision making level of the institution should be made to understand the importance first, but I am not certain how to achieve that. It would be good to hear how others achieve this. By the way, I would like to uh, pass this question to uh, the experienced panelists, like uh, I was thinking of Carlos, perhaps you can uh, start replying here and if other panelists want to add. Before that, I just want to say that you see here that all the questions are anonymous. Uh, we have done this for uh, data protection uh, reasons, okay? So it's not that we don't want to know who asked uh, uh, the question. Um, Carlos, can you, can you help replying to this uh, particular question? What is needed? What is needed? Uh, <laughs> I would say that, I mean, all these fields of credentials and formats and standards uh, in Europe and all around the world is a complex uh, creature. <laughs> and uh, really to understand all the implications and all the details of this, um, you should not be alone. So this is why in the Stati Digital, we have this community building effort so that people share experiences, share best practices. And I think this is a very important component on really understanding uh, all, all, all the details. No? So, I, so I, apart from the technical um, development, which is of course very relevant, very important in order to have this uh, tool to be practically uh, efficiently available to institutions, I think the human factor is to me um, very important. This is what we have done in Certi Digital and also with other committees, with the Rector's Conference and, 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 and other institutions. No? So, uh, yeah, so this is my, my first uh, answer, if you wish. Very good. Thank you very much. Does anyone else among the panelists want to add to this? Please jump in if so. Okay, then let's move uh, to others. But of course, it's important that your institution is behind it. And I, I, I want to repeat here as well that uh, we are, of course, there with our support team uh, to, to, to help you. Then let's move to the uh, next question, which is about uh, whether we could provide more insights into the tangible outcomes and impact of the EDC initiative in particular in terms of enhancing learner mobility and employability, do we have any key data points or success stories that highlight uh, the success? This one I would like to pass uh, to Celine. Uh, okay. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, we, we, I think this morning we, the different testimonials, we have quite a, different uh, success stories that were highlighted, but also as uh, Tuvan mentioned, um, it is also quite important to ensure uh, acceptance by, uh, by this, the learners, but also by employers and by the different institutions. Um, so that is also something uh, that is uh, still uh, to be uh, under uh, development. But I think it could be more interesting also to hear from our colleagues uh, that gave uh, testimonials this morning. Exactly. Tuvan, perhaps on this, how are, are your students perceiving the credentials and also uh, Stephanie? Um, if I may. Um, uh, so um, we have seen um, and we have spoken to students that have used the EDC to apply for jobs. Now, obviously, in this wallet, they have their CV, they have their qualifications, and um, they have successfully applied to other university ab universities abroad. 
and uh, also to um, to jobs and it was a recognized um, uh, qualification so it's increasing the, the mobility and um, and making the students more visible and setting the DC has set a standard basically um, okay we have different designs by um, the background but um, it is um, like like the Europa uh, CV it is um, a certificate basically that um, in the future I see to have replaced a lot of um, physical certificates and ha has become um, a template basically um, and obviously a recognized document. Yeah, so shortly okay. from our sides, um, yeah. yeah, how we can uh, make um, Europass a little bit more family or famous in other universities. So um, during the session, we always organize um, one session at the end of our program so that we can see the students again to get the feedback of the students general about the micro credentials and the content of your learning unit and also the digital credentials. First of all, we always briefly explain them um, in one presentation what exactly the Europass, what it could useful be for the student using digital credential, because until now our students they don't know about that. We don't know about the the, the Europass. We don't know about the digital credential. What could it be? Um, the most important for us is also to show them that they can share with the third party, with the custom, uh, with with the universities during the job application outside Germany, and they can also set scheduled the successibility of the digital credentials those the students don't know about that so the awareness is the most important that we have to um, explain them and uh, to to promote them a little bit to use that and we also uh, um, do the how-to papers the instructions everything's written on the document so that the student can read and um, they can do everything by themselves and get familiar with europass so i think it is the first step that we have to support the student to make uh, more awareness that um, we have Europass and they need to use a little bit more. And the next step in the next coming semester, we will um, get back to the, those kind of students and do a little bit more interviews to see how far they are, um, how used, how how do they or how have they um, they um, used um, Europass and digital credential until now. Um, but this is the next step for the next coming semester. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tuvanda. I, I would like to recall here as well the, the, the role, of course, of the National Europass Centers in promoting uh, the use of Europass, including uh, European digital credentials for learning. Then uh, we have we will take the question in orders by in order by uh, support of the question. So the question that is now on top is how does the EDC initiative pro provide support to educational institutions that are in early stages of adoption? Um, are there structured training programs or best practices available to facilitate a smooth transition to digital credentials? This one I would like to pass on to our support team. Uh, perhaps Ildiko, if you can reply to this one. Sure, I'm <clears throat> very happy to. And uh, some of you have already uh, probably been in touch uh, with our support team. Name uh, Kia uh, Likitalo is also uh, in the call. She's our first point of contract via contact via our functional mailbox. Uh, we do have a functional mailbox where people can send their inquiries and to support uh, implementation, we usually uh, supply answers in writing. Uh, we organize onboarding calls and we also uh, uh, provide troubleshooting uh, uh, sessions. Uh, David uh, already uh, referred to uh, us uh, sitting through with them uh, during their pilot or the first uh, issuing experience, making sure the, the ECLs are uh, logged in and used uh, correctly. So depending on the individual needs uh, or the tailored needs uh, of uh, an implementer, we will also tailor the support. We also help, and this is something that uh, our colleagues from Germany know, uh, with the customization, very often what David also uh, mentioned as the hardest first step to uh, build a credential, we can help you figure out uh, which fields to use for your particular uh, application. 
and uh, how to customize uh, the summary image of your credential so that it is aligned with your um, visual identity. So uh, please do get in touch with us. We also have a Futurium group uh, where you can have uh, uh, in, you can engage in peer uh, uh, dialogue, and we also monitor comments and questions there. Okay, thank you, Ilniko. I think that also replies already to the uh, to the next question. Um, and uh, in terms of capacity building for new organizations, I would also like to um refer to the uh webinar for beginners that we plan to organize later in the year or early uh, next year then um we have on top now the question on um on owning uh, data so receivers of uh edc so if you receive a credential let's say from your um, educational institution we always say that you are the owner of that uh, of that data, but higher education institutions are required by law to archive credentials. So let me reply by saying that the one doesn't exclude the other, but under the verifiable credential standards, the receiver of the credential really is the owner of the credential because it's the individual that you know decides where to store the credential, with whom. Uh, to share it and for how long. So this really gives a lot of autonomy, but it's still good, of course, that uh, there is an archive about credentials that have been issued uh, in case of uh, yeah, in case of emergencies or uh, there is a, uh, can no longer be found by the individual and so on. So that's my reply to that question. Then we go to the to the next uh, question, which is about um, Dr. Claus. Carlos, you mentioned that you have a committee in Spain to agree on the ELM fields. And the question is about, okay, how, how does that look in Europe uh, in order to make it interoperable uh, between countries? Otherwise, each country will agree on their way. Maybe you can start uh, by addressing this question by uh, just sharing with us what you are exactly doing in Spain in this context. And then I will add on the European dimension. In, in Spain, we have this urgent need because we have this 50 million uh, former ministry uh, for the Spanish public universities to develop micro credential courses. And this has to be certified with ELM, with EDC, with Certi Digital. So the universities now are figuring out yeah, how, how to describe in the practice, in the very detailed uh, point of view, uh, this micro credential. So this is urge, this need. Uh, and therefore, this uh, committee was created with the rector's conference and with this other uh, association of all the Spanish universities about continuous education uh, and that the digital as well. So it's a three uh, uh, institutions or, or uh, initiatives which are working together. We will have uh, next month in Madrid also a, a meeting with the recommendations uh, of this, uh, the results of, of this uh, consultation. So it's very practical, very pragmatical, no? and, 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 and it comes from this need um, from um, carried out uh, by because of, the, of this money which is available. Of course, uh, coordination on the European level is very important from several point of view, in particular from the European alliances, no? which are now defining common uh, programs, bachelor's, master's degrees. So there, Spanish law also allows to to issue um, digital um, credentials, not for the bachelor's master's programs, uh, which are not European. They still have to be at the moment in paper, but and there it's also needed. No, I don't know exactly what is going on at, at, at the European level in in the European alliances. I know that there is a committee that put them all together, this coordinates them. Uh, I know that 30 has been presented to them also as a, as a software solution for, for um, this. But from the practical point of view, in the same way as we have this committee here in Spain to, to deal with the practical issues, I'm not aware. And I would say it's very much needed and very necessary because uh, in order to to achieve coordination at this uh, pragmatics level. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Carlos, to, to highlight that. 
At, at the European level, indeed, it's, it's very important to ensure interoperability. So uh, the ELM is there, but we also need, of course, to discuss the ELM. And as a first step, we set up the Futurium uh, platform. And of course, we do have the Europass Advisory Group as well. That is the official uh, group that is in charge of um, yeah, of EDC and, uh, and of ELM. But of course, under the Union of Skills, we would also possibly consider uh, what, what, can, what can be done uh, by the new commission. And uh, in this context, uh, also the report by Professor uh, Draghi, the former European Central Bank president. He paid quite a lot of attention to the need for um, coming to a more yeah, Europeanized, let's say, uh, certification system uh, overall. Just um, for um, for logistical uh, reasons, I would like to say that we don't have time to reply to all the questions. We close our webinar at uh, 12 o'clock Central European Summer Time, and I would like to start the wrapping up in uh, in a couple of minutes from now. So the questions that we are not replying to orally, we will reply to in writing. And for this, we will also uh, prepare actually an article that we will publish on the Europass platform. And there you will find a link to the replies to the uh, questions. Then the next question is, is the ELM standard used for all EDC applications also for micro credentials? Yes. So the answer here is a clear yes. So ELM is really the data model that is used for all EDC applications, also for micro-credentials, we have also carried out a concrete mapping of the standards and the standard elements uh, listed in the micro-credentials council recommendation and have mapped them to ELM. And I think we organized even a webinar on, on that uh, specifically. Um, then the next question is about digital credentials and educational settings and not being integrated more broadly into critical industries like occupational training for industry sectors. Here uh, we can uh, we can say that, of course, now you have seen that the testimonials are indeed a bit more in the educational field, but for uh, say be it. Uh, it's addressing also uh, teachers in particular, but here um, I would like to stress the, the broad scope of EDC and EDC can be perfectly used also to certify uh, or to, to issue a credential in relation to certified training uh, related to occupational uh, training. The examples here are also the uh, European academies. And um, and yeah, the, for example, the Inno Energy uh, Academy is uh, working on issuing also EDCs as credential, and other EU academies are doing uh, are doing the same. And next uh, question is about um, cooperation between EDC and international networks like the Groningen Declaration Network for a, a, a broader global adoption. Yes, here I can say that we have many contacts with colleagues and who are active in the Groningen Declaration uh, Network. Um, we have been there ourselves uh, from the Commission, but also members of our support team are going to the next uh, are going to the GDN uh, meeting. So we we ensure uh, coordination there. Good. Then, um, then the next question. So, could you elaborate on security protocols and data privacy measures implemented to safeguard integrity of digital credentials? So, here because the, it is a bit more um, technical and more related to the verifiable credential standard. Perhaps, Anthony, you want to say a couple of words? I'm sorry, I absolutely can because we don't have a lot of time. All I'll say for the moment is that the, let's say everything is digitally signed, is digitally signed uh, in line with both the best practices from verifiable credentials as well as the best practices from ADAS. Um, uh, these are well accepted, mature, very well rolled out technologies. So, in terms of the integrity of digital credentials, we are quite uh, taken care of. 
Additionally, for accredited credentials, those are also backed up by a trusted issuers list, which is the ETC accreditation database, to make sure that certain classes of credentials are issued by licensed institutions. So, generally speaking, the short answer is industry best practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Anthony, for this very short and uh, comprehensive answer. And I think it's now time to uh, wrap up. I'm sorry, we still have 10 questions left, but we don't have the time to reply to the questions orally. So, as I said before, we will reply to the questions in writing and, um, and we will add them to the article that we will publish on, uh, on the webinar to celebrate three years of EDC. So, wrapping up, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, all the participants that have been uh, with us. Uh, we still have 182 participants. Uh, at some moment, we were uh, around 220, I think, at the maximum. So, this shows the continued uh, strong interest in, uh, in EDC. Uh, we saw in the beginning that we uh, had also many uh, beginners. And, and this, of course, really makes us makes us very happy uh, because it shows the true interest in uh, moving towards uh, digital uh, credentialing. And um, yeah, in addition to the participants, I would, of course, very much like to thank our uh, speakers who present the testimonials. So, Carlos Delgado Close, thank you very much. And thanks a lot also to Van Letty and Matthias Spiegel. Thanks a lot, Stephanie uh, Ferlacotis, and then finally, uh, last but not least, thanks a lot, David, uh, for your uh, for your testimonial, for your presentation. The slide presentations, as I already said before, we will also share them with you. Um, we will publish an article about um, about the webinar. And we will also in there well, reply to the remaining questions. And then very important is that there will be um, a yeah, the recording will be visible, will be you can visit the recording on YouTube. Once that is done, we will also inform you and you can further uh, share it. And of course, also, uh, we would like to invite you to spread the word about uh, about EDC also, for example, through your own social media uh, channels. And I can also say that we will continue cooperation with other networks. Um, uh, they already passed a bit, the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, but also the at one Tech Consortium. We're also discussing, of course, with the Open Batch community. We are discussing and have actually close contacts with the Groningen Declaration Network, where the annual meeting took place last year, but our contacts go further than that. So we are really uh, in, in this broader uh, context of working together with other parties, because this is so much needed in the end to achieve interoperability, to make sure that credentials that individuals gain are not just valid at the institution where they were issued, but are, of course, valid countrywide, but are also understood by, by the people who receive them, by uh, employers, for example, by education and, and training institutions, but also by uh, credential evaluators eh, who, who give advice on recognition. We are, of course, moving in that direction little by little. So thanks a lot for um, for the for the speakers there. And I would like to refer also to uh, the possibility and, and, and it's a real invitation to join our Futurium uh, group, which is the yeah, discussion uh, platform on the European learning model on European digital credentials for learning. Uh, it was quite recently uh, launched, but uh, we welcome you all there in order to share your experiences with EDC and also with ELM. And last but not least, I would also like to uh, thank the support team and, and Celine for setting up uh, for setting up the webinar. I hope it was useful for you and that you enjoyed it. And uh, I also hope that you enjoyed the opening speech by Anne Branch, which gave a bit more the uh, broader policy context of the work on European digital credentials for learning. 
So I'm wishing you a very nice afternoon. Looking forward to be in touch. And thanks a lot for your participation and have a good day.